In this video, I'll be teaching you how to make a tab change interaction in Webflow. Let's jump straight into it. So in this first example website, biorelate.com, we can see that we have this nice hero section. And as I scroll down to the next section, we can see this is following a tab format. So you can see right now we're on knowledge graph and it's displaying information on the right hand side. But if we change between tabs, you'll notice that it's reflecting the changes. But more importantly, you can see in this specific example, this website has this asterisk icon. So whenever you're selected onto a certain tab state, not only does it have it in this blue gradient effect, but it also has this tab asterisk whenever you click into a selected state. So let's go ahead and build this in Webflow. So right now I have this Webflow project. I just created this random project. Um, it is from the peanuts. And if I actually preview this, you can see that I just have a simple tab that's showing different characters from the peanuts universe. So in this case, we have the adorable Snoopy, then Woodstock right here, then Charlie Brown slash the blockhead. So this is built through a native tab element. I'm not really going to walk through it because that's not really the tutorial, but just for those who are interested, if I click this plus right here and go to elements, there's actually a native uh, component called tabs. So right here, if I just scroll down, you can see that if I actually just type it in right here, there's something called tabs. So if I actually just draw this in or add this in to my container, you can see how a tab really works is that there's a tab, that's the component, then inside that div block or inside that parent element, we have tab menu. So that's the tab one, tab two, tab three. And then below that is tab content with the different tab panels. So if you actually head over to tabs, you can go into settings on the right hand side. You can go ahead and rename the tabs. And you can also click add tab. So you can see as I'm adding a tab, it's actually creating more of these tab items in the tab menu. You can see that now we're up to number five and automatically it would add something called a tab pane. That's where you add your content. So again, I'm not going to go through this because it's not really the tutorial, but just keep in mind that's how I built it or natively done in Webflow. And you'll notice that I've given certain elements a class. So for example, these tab menu links, I've given a class of Snoopy dash tab and I've given a rounded corner with a one pixel border and just a really low opacity white as a background. And then you can notice that if you actually select your mouse in the selected state, it actually says current. So this is the green tag that you can see in the class right here. And that's where I actually applied another style. So that's how you actually have the different styles. So for example, if I select Woodstock, you can see that's the selected state, Charlie Brown, etc. And just a bonus, you can also change a couple of things. So if you go to the tab menu and hit settings, you can actually choose the default state. So maybe you want to change it to Woodstock, the middle one as the default, or you can actually change it to none. That's just an option that you can do. You can also change the easing like as you click between tabs, it changes the effects. But let's get actually get into the tutorial that I'm mainly here to teach you. Super, super simple. So let's just go ahead and say we want an icon right besides, you know, Woodstock or Snoopy or any of these tabs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually drag in the image that I want. Let's say I want this star icon right here. So this is literally just an image of a diamond. But this can be anything. This can be a div block. This can be a different image. This can be a GIF file. It can be whatever you want. But right now I have this image and I've dragged it inside my link, my link menu that's actually sitting inside the tab menu right here. So that's the actual link that you click into. And again, I've given them a class of Snoopy dash tabs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit flex because I want everything to align horizontally. And I'm going to go ahead and set this to center. And I'm actually going to hit this diamond image that I've just added. I'm just going to give it a class of tab dash icon, uh, new. And then you can see right here, I can actually style this. So I can actually just give it a height, let's just say of 1.5 RAM. That looks about correct. And I actually wanna put it on the left-hand side. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and drag this icon just for, before the text. So that's how it's sitting on the left. And what I'm also gonna do is just add a bit of margin on the right-hand side, let's just say 0.3 RAM. And you can see that is done. What I can do now, because this actually has the class that I just applied, tab-icon-new, I can copy this and just paste it in each one of these nav links or these, sorry, tab links. And I can go ahead and just rearrange it so it's before each of the text. So now you can see that we have this icon 
but obviously if I preview it, it doesn't achieve that effect. I only want this icon to appear when it's on the selected state. So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to do this, super simple, we can actually have the tab menu selected right here. Make sure we have that class selected, this component right here. Let's go ahead and hit settings and then, sorry, interactions. Right here where it says element trigger, we can click plus and we can actually click into the actual tab icon, tab link, sorry, so not the tab menu. Hit plus and you'll notice there's actually an interaction or element trigger called tab change. So I bet you guys didn't even know that. Um, but you can actually click into tab change and then from here we can actually apply a new animation click plus and we can call it something like icon tab in so this is whenever it's in the selected state what do we want we can go ahead and select that tab icon and hit plus we can click hide and show and we can put this to flex and we can leave this to only children within this class because we're going to apply the interaction to to each one of these buttons so it's best to put this on children. Otherwise, if we put it to all elements, it won't actually work unless you want that effect. So I'm going to remain to only children with this class. Hit save. And now I'm actually going to click a new animation when it's out of view right here at the bottom. And what I can do here is I can actually just duplicate the one I just created and I can actually click into it and just rename it. So always rename stuff for organization purposes. So instead of calling it in, I'll call it out. Tab icon tab out. Hit this tab icon and then move it from flex to none and again we leave it to only children within this class so now what i can do is right now this animation is only applying to this specific tab but i want it to apply for all of the tabs and rather than manually adding it in which is very inefficient we can actually just hit this button right here to class snoopy dash tabs that's what i called it they're all sharing the same class so now i don't need to you know reapply each one of them it's now just using the class and that's why if we go back into this it's set to children because now that's applying to the class it's only applying to the children element it's not applying to all the elements so i hope that makes sense because again if i put this into all elements you'll literally start using this tab icon new this illustration that i added to all of the tabs regardless of where they're at so that's the difference between children and all children is within that specific like the parent so that's what that is and now what i can do is i can go back to the tab icon new and I can go ahead and set this to none. So right here, display with this drop down, none. Now if I preview everything, you'll notice that we have this nice diamond shape wherever I've selected the mouse or whatever I selected the toggle state. And again, how this is working is right now we have that icon, which is tab dash icon new. It's set to display none, but we have an interaction whenever the tab is selected it will display that icon from display none to display flex and then whenever it's out of view it'll then put it back to display none so that's how that is working and here are just some bonus things that you can do so firstly let's go ahead and just make sure that snoopy is selected first because that's i kind of like snoopy i don't really want woodstock to be the default because it's giving glory away from snoopy um so right now if i go here you can see snoopy is selected what you also notice is that because this icon right here is taking a certain width let's say like I don't know, 10 pixels or 5 pixels, you'll notice that the buttons kind of like stretch a bit. So that's fine. I mean, if you're happy with that, that's cool. But there's one way you can, you know, solve this. You can actually go back to the tabs and perhaps we want to give it a min width. So maybe we want to give it a min width of 16 rems. So that way it has plenty of space. And now you notice if I click onto the tab, it doesn't, you know, make that box or that tab link stretch. Another thing we can do, so again, this is very situational. This whole effect is very situational. You might not want it, but it's just very niche. What you can also do is let's go back into the tab icon new, change it from display none to display block, just so we can see what's going on. And what you can also do is change each of the icon of that specific tab item. So for example, let's say Snoopy, I can change the image from this diamond to let's say this bone image that I've just you know uploaded. And then Woodstock can change it from the diamond uh, I'll just leave Woodstock as a diamond and then Charlie Brown, I can change it from that diamond to this football. So anyone who's a you know Snoopy fan or Peanuts fan, you, you get that reference. But anyways, now that I've done this, I can go back into the tab icon, hit none. Now if I preview, you can see Snoopy now has a bone. Woodstock is that diamond and Charlie Brown now has a football because he's a blockhead. So you can see this is the effect. Um, the main premise is to understand that there's an interaction called tab change. And this is what you can do, you know, again, it doesn't have to be an image, it can be a div block, it can be a background color, 
Um, it could be, you know, a GIF file, but this is something that you can do. This is very situational, obviously, but this is like a small interaction, small detail that will separate your website apart if applicable. So thanks again for listening to my rambling. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Peace.